this is still part of the glycine, but this is part of the alanine. Mm -hmm. This is the rightmost part of the glycine, and this is the leftmost part of the alanine. It's really helpful, again, when you're doing this to keep labeling the alpha carbons. Notice what's the structure here. Nitrogen, alpha carbon, carboxy carbon. Nitrogen, alpha carbon, carboxy carbon. Nitrogen, alpha carbon, carboxy carbon. The way to make sure you're getting the, the main chain correct is just keep repeating that pattern. Nitrogen, alpha carbon, carboxy carbon. We're going to keep calling this the carboxy carbon even though it's not a carboxy group anymore because it came from a carboxy group. We'll keep calling this the carboxy carbon even though now it's really an amide carbon. But it came from the carboxy group, so we'll keep calling that the carboxy carbon. Now, if we wanted to, we could add on another amino acid. Or I could add another amino acid to this end as well. I could put a carboxy group over here and have this nitrogen attack a carboxy group. So we can keep extending the, the chain from either direction and keep drawing it out. Should be an excellent. Uh, so remind me of that, that in a second. That would be a good problem to go back to. Or suppose we can do that now. What page is that on? Twenty-nine. Now, when I say that the main chain is always nitrogen, alpha carbon, carboxy carbon, that doesn't mean that there's a law that says they have to be written from left to right, even though that's the conventional way to write them. We're just saying that the main chain is identified as a nitrogen, an alpha carbon, and a carboxy carbon. find the main chain. Well, we know that the main chain has a nitrogen. So try to point to the nitrogen on the main chain. Point to it on the paper. There we go. Now we know that connected to the nitrogen is supposed to be the alpha carbon. So point to the carbon that's connected to the nitrogen. That must be the alpha carbon. That answers your question. Your question is, where's the alpha carbon? Well, here's the alpha carbon. Of course, there's no law that says that he has to draw an alpha next to it. That's our job. It's our job to put the alpha in there. The alpha carbon is the carbon between the nitrogen and the carboxy carbon. Now let's point to the carboxy carbon. Well, we can see this really is an alpha carbon, isn't it? Because it's between the nitrogen and the carboxy carbon. The one thing that confused you is that in my, in my picture up here, I had them just arranged straight horizontally. I had them arranged horizontally, but there's no rule that says that the nitrogen can't be pointing down. The only rule is that it has to be nitrogen, alpha carbon, carboxy carbon. So now, let's point to the first carbon in the side chain. That's right. A good name for that is the beta carbon. The beta carbon is where the side chain begins. The alpha carbon is part of the main chain. And the beta carbon is the first carbon in the side chain. So this is the first carbon in the side chain. So now we can identify, let's circle the side chain. Let's circle all the atoms in the side chain. That's right, including the beta carbon. Now, very important, we should not circle the alpha carbon. The alpha carbon is in the main chain. The first carbon in the side chain is the beta carbon. And now you should look at your table and ask which of the side chains in the table it looks the most similar to this side chain. None of them will look exactly the same, but you want the one that looks the most similar. Might as well go ahead and finish that off. Let's look at the side chain and see which of these looks the most similar.
have to be arranged in a ring already. Actually, I wouldn't say this. Tyrosine, because, or maybe it is tyrosine, I don't know. Anyway, this is tyrosine just with two nitro groups added. This is the exact side chain for tyrosine just with two extra nitro groups. This is a somewhat ambiguous question because the word similar is a little bit ambiguous, but this is what he was going for as the most similar. Now, the key to getting this question right was disentangling the side chain from the main chain. And what really was helpful is repeating our mantra the main chain is nitrogen, alpha carbon, carboxy carbon. Once we found the nitrogen, alpha carbon, carboxy carbon, we knew this was the main chain, and we were able to disentangle that from the side chain. The most conventional way to write the main chain is horizontally, with the nitrogens on the left and the carboxys on the right. When you're writing your main chains, you should usually write them like this, horizontally with the nitrogens on the left and the carboxys on the right. But there's no law that the instructor can't make a hard question by twisting those around. So here the instructor made this difficult by writing the main chain in an unconventional fashion. He wrote the main chain in an unconventional fashion, and then we had to still figure out that this was still the main chain. But it's still helpful to look for nitrogen, alpha carbon, carboxy carbon. And we're seeing how helpful it is to label the alpha carbon. And sometimes it's helpful to label the beta carbon too, because that tells you where the side chain has begun. Good, that was a good question. But again, this is the conventional way to draw these. It's conventional, notice then, to put the nitrogens on the left and the carboxys on the right. Now this is what's called the N-terminus. And this is what's called the C-terminus. Do you see why those names make sense? Now obviously there's a nitrogen here as well, but it's not at the terminus, so to speak. The atom at the terminus here is the, the carbon here, this carboxy group. And there's a carboxy carbon over here, but it's not at the terminus. The terminus here is the nitrogen. That's why this is called the N side, and this is called the C side. The convention is to put the N terminus on the left and the C terminus on the right. That's important to memorize. If, a, if an amino acid is drawn in conventional form, we should be putting the N terminus on the left and the C terminus on the right. We've seen that sometimes to make a hard problem, the instructor could depart from that and not go left to right. But the convention that you, that you should assume if you, if you need to make an assumption is that the N terminus is on the left and the C terminus is on the right. For example, suppose that your instructor said, draw the structure of alanine, serine, threonine. Well then, that would, uh, when you were drawing that, you would want to put which of these amino acids would be at the N terminus? And which would be at the C terminus? We're just expected to know that. The convention is he doesn't have to say that especially. If he just lists a bunch of amino acids, you're supposed to take it for granted. This is the N terminus and this is the C. So you need to have memorized conventionally N terminus on the left, C terminus on the right. I just think of a, just as a memory aid, I think NC stands for non-commissioned, like a non-commissioned officer. So N on the left, C on the right. How then would we write the name of this molecule? Let's write what this is. So it's a glycine in the front, mm -hmm. uh, an alanine, and a serine. So if you were asked to name this tripeptide, this would be the correct name, with dashes in between the amino acids. Mm -hmm. It would be wrong to write it like this. You're supposed to write it from the N terminus to the C terminus. So the way, you, the way you said it was correct. Good. Now, what type of functional group is this? Amine. Is that basic? Yes. So it has two different forms. Right. What type of functional group is this? An amide. An amide. Is that basic? No. Because there's a resonance form that puts the positive charge on the nitrogen. Right. So does this have two different forms? No. no. This is important. As long as the nitrogen, so we know that every amino acid has a nitrogen. Every amino acid has a nitrogen. 
as long as the nitrogen is an amine, it can take two different forms. But once it turns into an amide, it can't take two different forms. We have to worry then about whether we should protonate or not protonate this nitrogen. But we should not worry about protonating or not protonating this nitrogen. There's only one form of an amide. 